What if Classic Risk Map was complexified? Here is another 6 player fixed card game which is being played on the Earth 2209 AD map, the map with even 78 different territories and 11 different areas to hold. Looking to my opponent's stats it seems that yellow and pink players are high ranked players, while the blue and green players are very low ranked ones, the purple player seems to be a low ranked player as well, but he isn't as new to the game like the blue and green players are. So I think it would be the best to make sure to be allied with the blue, green and purple players, while to make alliances with yellow and pink shouldn't matter too much. Low rank players tend to make a lot of bad moves which could ruin the game for both of you, so it's just better to be allied with them, so they wouldn't be touching you, and besides that they tend to take the alliances very seriously, and with that they could break the balance of the game very easily by attacking weaker player while their strong ally is dominating the game. And if you had to choose which player of these two you want to be, I think your choice would be obvious. But if you don't send an alliance request to a low rank player in one of the first turns, then later on he could just ignore or decline your alliance request as he is already allied with someone else and is really happy about that. While high rank players are more or less logical and reasonable behind their moves, so the alliances with them don't matter as much, but could be still good to have them, just to make sure that they wouldn't be going after you. So I accepted the yellow player's alliance request even though he is far away from me, but he is getting a continent soon, and that could be a very good privilege to be allied with the player who has the biggest potential to become the strongest, as that player will have the most influence to the game, and with that he will be able to decide which player to try targeting and eliminating from the game as long as he wants to. And then with the purple player being such a player as well, plus a low rank player who will be neighboring me, I decided to send the alliance request to him by myself, but unfortunately he hasn't responded to it yet, so it's hard to say yet whether he would be fine of me holding a continent close to him or not. But either way even if I won't be able to hold the bottom half of Africa, at least I should be able to increase my territorial troop bonus by capturing and having a lot of territories. But alright, he has just accepted my alliance request, so I assume we should be friendly neighbors now. And then the reason to send an alliance request for the pink player was that we would be friendly neighbors also. The pink player is a high rank player, so I don't think he would attack me randomly, but I mean you can never know, so to be on the safe side it's the best to be allied with him. And then the green player sent me an alliance request in the beginning of the game, possibly because he might have wanted to go for Australia or the continent which I initially planned to go for, but after thinking for a bit I decided that I will rather go for another continent and have a good relationship with a low rank player rather than have a bad relationship with him which could really backfire me in case he would have gotten not satisfied with me, and especially if he had gotten to hold a continent. So I decided to accept his alliance request and go for bottom half of Africa instead, which was a good continent choice for me to go also, assuming the purple player wouldn't have decided to contest for it with me and he didn't. And I mean obviously we don't know if Australia was the exact reason for the green player to send an alliance request for me, but this is my prediction. Then when it comes to the yellow player, maybe he thought that I will go for the upper part of North America and could have potentially been a problem to him, or another reason for him to send an alliance request for me is maybe because he wanted to be allied with everyone, to send alliance request to everyone could be a common strategy for high rank players. So I wouldn't be surprised if the yellow player is allied with everyone, or with the most of players. I mean we are going to see whether he will attack someone or if rather he will be more a passive turtling player like I'm planning to be myself, at least when it comes to the beginning of the game, as to get into a conflict with someone when your borders could be easily invaded wouldn't be smart at all. So in this stage of the game I have to ensure to get a stronger position of successfully holding a continent and having the advantage over those who don't, and or over the those who are in some sort of a conflict. And while being not strong I obviously couldn't successfully guaranteed of properly guarding all of my borders, I was able to make a lot of important alliances which should ensure me of successfully holding a continent even with me barely putting any troops on some of my borders. 
I think most importantly in a such big map with big continents who have a lot of borders and territories, was to allied with the neighboring players, especially low ranked ones, so I'm super happy having an alliance with the purple and green player, and then pretty happy having an alliance with the pink player too which is a high ranked player, but the one who is neighboring me also. Then when it comes to yellow, he is a far away from me, so he isn't that much of a big threat for me. But I mean with him being the strongest player, I'm really enjoying being allied with him also. Then when it comes to the blue player, he is a low ranked one, so technically it would be very good to have an alliance with him also, but besides him being far away from me, he is also one of the weakest players, so I think he should get eliminated soon, and with that to be allied with him isn't important now. And if he doesn't trade in a set at 4 cards, then I think it would just be the best for me to take him out from the game, so someone would get eliminated and the game wouldn't sailmate much, and then with me potentially having plans to expand to the upper part of Africa the blue player wouldn't be a potential problem for me anymore either. But alright, the blue player does have a set. A little bit unfortunate because all of the 6 players stay in the game, but at the same time that isn't something bad either. It's good to have low rank players in the game as probably they will be the ones who will advance the game, well assuming if they don't play passively, and with the game being played in a public lobby, I assume much more chances for the low rank players in the game to play aggressively. And the blue player already been a bit of the problem for the green and purple players before, so I assume he might get into a conflict with someone else again whether it's sooner or later. So just the most important thing is that he wouldn't try messing up with me, as in that case my position might not look as promising. I could have invaded the blue player if wanted, but I think we'll rather not make any enemy as of now, if I decide to attack someone, then I will have to fight with him until he gets eliminated, and meanwhile someone could invade me breaking my troop bonuses, and with that I would be in a very bad situation with blue and that another player targeting me at once so I think I will rather try to play safe as of now. As you saw the yellow player attack purple, and the purple player try to retaliate, and will be an issue for the yellow player up until he gets eliminated, so now the yellow player is just forced to keep attacking purple before doing anything else. The conflict which he started, he must finish, otherwise if the yellow player leaves the purple player alone, then with the purple player getting strong once again, he would be a very big problem for the yellow player. But as you can see with the yellow player attacking purple, the purple player is almost dead, so he will get eliminated. And with that the yellow player could start another conflict by targeting another player, but once again he would have to evaluate if he could afford that. And oh no, don't say that the blue player is going to invade me. And phew, it seems he intends to be friendly towards me. I think either that or he was afraid of a possible retaliation. I was about to send an alliance request but with him doing that troop split and not invading me, I decided not to anymore. Now my question is whether I should capture the top of Africa too or not, before the pink player potentially adding some of troops here also. And I mean we saw what happened in the purple player's case when he tried to expand to another continent without being that strong yet. I believe he was twice as weak as yellow when he did that, while I seem to be as strong as other players, and the yellow player seems to be far away from me in case he would like to attack a player who captures a second continent for himself again. So with all of that I decided to take that risk, as if I actually hold these two continents, then I should be in a much better position than the ones who only have one. It will probably guarantee me in ending up in a 3 player situation assuming everyone stays friendly with me now, and I have the alliances with all of the players, so that's good for me. Thank god the blue player accepted my alliance request, and with that I don't think he would attack me immediately in the same turn after accepting it, that would be very weird. And then I think I trust the green player the most, he could potentially become a player who takes an alliance too seriously with me. And with all of that I decided to build a counter-attack army inside my continent, which is mostly in the position to counter-attack pink. As I think I trust the pink player the least. 
the blue and green players are both me neighboring low rank players who I believe could take my alliance very seriously, while the pink player is a high rank neighboring player, which I believe wouldn't let me easily dominate the game in case I would become too strong. And then the yellow player is a high rank player who is far away from me, other players continents are kinda isolating me from him, so I don't think we will really get to face each other before some other player gets eliminated or weakened by a lot. And I think I will just continue to waiting for it, I think it's the best for me to just hoard my troops waiting till some other players start fighting with each other, so then I would end up being in a very strong position but not being in the one in which I would be barely surviving, by having my faith dependent on the other player's hands. I really like that the blue player is playing aggressively, I like that he didn't let the pink player hold another continent, so I think the blue player might be my favorite player now. He likes to expand fast and besides that doesn't mind getting into a conflict with someone. And most importantly I don't have to worry about him becoming very strong, as he is going to use his troops on other players while staying loyal to me, so I don't really have to worry about him so unless it would be needed for the balance of the game, but the blue player is very far away of becoming much stronger than anybody else, he is miles away from that. For him to start growing very strong, I believe he would need to capture two more continents which is very unlikely to happen, and even with that somebody would invade him for sure anyway. But like I said the blue player isn't a big worry to me with us having an alliance, and with him not being worried about me at all that I could potentially invade him into his continents, it seems he neither tries to guard his borders well against me, nor builds any counter-attack armies like I do, so I think he trusts me a lot, and with that he will probably be looking to attack all of the other players before considering to attack me. At the very least I know that he wants to attack Pink, though that might be possible that he has an alliance with someone else as well. But either way I don't think the blue player should be an issue for me before another player gets eliminated from the game. At this moment I wouldn't like to attack the blue player at all. I think the blue player will be the one who will advance the game the most. The yellow player did a very good job on his part to progress the game by setting up the purple player to be eliminated, but I think for now he will be more of a passive player in order to not weaken his position, but if someone invades him, then I think he should retaliate. So I'm just hoping for the blue player to do so. After he finally finishes dealing with the pink player in Asia and considers capturing the top part of Europe, it seems the blue player slowed himself down by a lot recently which I don't really like but I think in this situation it's just the best for me to continue waiting till some conflicts among other players start happening. As to start a conflict with someone would probably be a very bad choice, especially blue. Though I could probably consider betraying green, he is the least suitable player to invade me from my neighboring players, but I don't think I want that at all. To have strong alliances with low rank players could be very important, as they could really be the ones which could decide whether you will win or lose. As they could really either improve or worsen your position by a lot depending whether you're friends or enemies with them. So if they're not issue for you, then it's better to not start messing up with them. And what I know is that if I start attacking green, then I will have to continue targeting him every turn up until I eliminate him, as the diplomacy between us would be ruined, and if keeping him alive, then I would probably be in a very bad position, as then the green player would think of plans on how to make a revenge to me over considering to attack some other players. So I don't want to attack neither blue nor green, so unless they would become very obviously weak. But if not, then I would rather prefer for them to be alive and potentially going after the pink and yellow players eventually. I mean the blue player is already going after pink, so he just doesn't have the access to invade the pink player into South America to stop the pink player from getting troops, so that's a bit sad. But if the pink player continues adding a bunch of troops in Asia which are getting crushed by blue anyway, then I think I might consider betraying the pink player by myself to potentially make him eliminated if I see that I could afford starting a conflict with him. As what I want is to end up in a 3 player situation with low ranked players but not high ranked ones. The low ranked players tend to take the alliances too seriously with you, while the high ranked ones not. 
the low rank players try to make attacks, while the game with high rank players tends to stalemate, usually none of high rank players want to team up with you on another high rank player, and the game usually ends by one of the high rank players suiciding on another player, and that could be you in case you try to make a lot of attacks or a lot of action in general and by that pissing one of players off. So you're just being encouraged of staying passive and making as few attacks as possible, as otherwise another player could really decide to suicide on you and that's something what is very unfortunate. What I see is that the pink player stopped adding his troops in Asia and that's a bit bad because it isn't something I would like. Because what I was hoping is that the pink player will continue weakening himself by adding his troops in Asia which would be crushed by the blue player anyway. But now since he stopped doing that and seemingly is about to start turtling like me as well, it might be a little bit harder and might not as worth to try eliminating him now, but I mean I have two continents while the pink player only one, and besides that I'm much stronger than him anyway, and will just continue getting stronger. And with that I might eventually consider to betray him. Because what I want is that I would be the only turtling player. I want that over aggressive players would be destroying each other while letting me get and hoard a lot of troops with me staying neutral. And if somebody else wants to use this turtling strategy as well, then it's in my best interest to try getting rid of that player as long as it would be affordable, as otherwise I could just ruin the game for both of us. And the only thing which stops me from attacking pink is the yellow player. The yellow player is as strong as me, so by targeting pink I could give a huge advantage for yellow, and this is something I don't want, I wouldn't like to give away the game for another player. The blue and green players seems to go after each other like crazy, so then if I and the pink player fought each other also, then it would be the most ideal situation for the yellow player. He could just continue getting a bunch of troops while staying neutral and doing nothing while all other players destroy each other, and the yellow player has two continents which give him a good amount of troops every turn. So what I would like is that either green or blue will prevail in their fight, what one of them would start dominating over each other, so then that player would be balancing the yellow player. I mean the yellow player would be still the strongest, but he wouldn't get a position in which he could dominate the game easily. The blue player wants me to attack pink, and maybe yeah, I've been considering attacking the pink player for a while now. So if I just weaken the pink player little by little, then maybe something too bad won't happen. I mean I'm not planning to do anything crazy while the yellow player would be possibly just hoarding troops. Thank god the blitz roll to invade the pink player went very well, as that worried me a lot, I didn't want to start adding some troops next to the pink player's border to not make it obvious that I'm planning to attack him, but now there's no way the pink player could invade me. I think there's no reason for the pink player let getting 10 extra troops per turn when I could easily prevent it at basically no cost, I only had to crush 15 troops. It would have been a different thing if the pink player was wasting his troops like the blue and green players do, but with him just hoarding his troops and turtling like me, there is not a much of a good reason to let him getting strong as well. So just like I said some more of a worry for me is the yellow player, but the pink player seems to be a smart player, so in case the blue and green players weaken each other too much, and the yellow player in comparison with us would get very strong then I think he would understand that we would have to stop the conflict and focus on the yellow player instead. But it seems like the green player is prevailing over blue, so with the green player holding these continents and potentially expanding to one more, the yellow player shouldn't become too strong. It seems like the pink player has backed off, fortifying some of his troops back to the territory which doesn't border with me. So what I think is that he will continue combining his armies into one and just staying neutral will wait for some opportunities to come. But oh no, it seems I was wrong. The pink player is threatening to invade me into my continents, either that or he wants to break through green. But judging by the fact that I attacked him, I think he wants to get a revenge on me. And I'm not sure if it's something what I could afford especially if he manages to invade me into both of my continents ruining my big troops bonus, so I think it's better if I attack him first by myself. It's of course possible that the pink player could be bluffing, 
but usually in public lobbies players don't bluff. If they fortify their big army next to another player, then they will attack him. And another thing what I know is that in public lobbies players no matter they rank really like to suicide, especially if someone weakens their position by a lot. So yeah, I think I did good by crushing the pink player's army by myself. So now there is just possibility that the yellow player could decide to betray me, at least this is what I would consider to do if I was yellow. But what I saw is that the yellow player has been very passive since the purple player was eliminated, and this was one of my reasons to start a conflict with pink, as I thought while it would be good for the yellow player to attack me when the blue and green players are destroying each other. By being very passive he might just continue turtling again and let me catch up to him the troop wise again. So while I knew that it could be some bigger risk to mess up pink, I thought it is still worth the risk with the yellow player playing very passively. And then another reason to try getting rid of pink was to try making the game to advance, as it could be very boring when the same situation just continues happening for ages and the game just stalls. So I decided to rather have some fun while still trying to play very safely. And now as you can see I additionally captured South America, and my plan is to outgrow the yellow player the troop wise, so I would be the strongest player from which the game depends the most. I would rather like to dictate the game rather than being dictated by it. So I have to become stronger than others, as the more stronger I am, the more the game could be influenced by me. But as you can see the yellow player is unwilling to additionally let me have South America and outgrow him the troop wise. But at least it was worth a try. The good news is that the yellow player didn't invade me into all other continents, he had over 40 troops advantage over me and could have even increased it more while the blue and green players are not hesitating to keep destroying each other. So let's actually invade the yellow player by ourselves. I think I could take the advantage over him, his biggest armies are blocked, and my non-guarded continents are being protected by other opponent's troops. Though he could still use his 30 troops to go through the green player, but by doing that he would make a low rank player as his enemy which could really worsen his diplomatic position on the board. Because as of now it seems the green player is neutral towards both of us. But alright. Unfortunately with the yellow player trading in a set it's more than enough troops to get to me going through the blue player, and very unluckily it seems the yellow player will invade all three of the continents. And to potentially ruin the diplomacy with the blue player probably couldn't bother the yellow player less, as the blue player seems to be barely alive and couldn't properly retaliate, and then it seems that blue is extremely mad on the green player, so the green player will be blue's main target anyway. So everything went so much better for the yellow player than I expected, and he is still in the advantage over me the troop wise. Though I still like my position by a lot with him having so many of his armies blocked which couldn't attack me. So let's try again, while I couldn't hold any of my continents last turn, maybe this time I will be able to guard more or less properly and at least hold something. And what I see is that with him fortifying his army out from Greenland, he made me a great opportunity to invade him through it into his second continent as well, so no more extra continental troops for him. I fortified one of my bigger armies to that upper African border, so this time I would be sure to hold everything, so unless the yellow player would like to go through the green player which I really doubt. So I think this turn I should end up holding these continents. But it looks like I was wrong again. It seems the yellow player will do everything to prevent me from holding these continents and receiving a bunch of troops so I wouldn't end up destroying him. Even if that means to destroy the diplomacy with the green player who is not appreciating the yellow player going through his continents and even sent me an attack request to attack him. The green player is definitely staying in a three player situation with the blue player being barely alive. And that should really disfavor the yellow player for sure by having two enemies at once. And it seems the blue player has already quit the game. So good luck to the yellow player to additionally having to deal with green next to me. Though I think the yellow player's goal is to only focus on attacking me, so with that the green player's position should be better than mine in case he decides to stay neutral over attacking yellow.
so thank God that the yellow player unleashed my upper African army which led me to easily recapture all of my continents. That was a big mistake for the yellow player while he could have selected the path to invade me without unleashing that army. And then thank God that the yellow player has run out of time to fortify one of his armies into one of my continents, that is very favorable for me, also. And finally another very good thing is that the green player only recaptured one of his continents, while I captured even three. So with that I might be able to take the advantage over the green player as well. Or at least I won't be dependent on him attacking yellow, as he could just decide to stay neutral while the yellow player is looking forward to attack me. So while I could get quite more troops than green, I can use them on yellow, so I would eliminate the threat of yellow while still staying as strong as green. And obviously I have to crush whichever army the yellow player fortifies next to me, as otherwise I won't receive huge troop bonus anymore. As of now I basically regain everything what I lose crushing into the yellow player. So my biggest concern is actually more the green player as if he starts receiving as big troop bonus as me while the yellow player would be looking forward to target me, then I might be forced to invade green which would highly ruin my amazing diplomacy, with him starting to pay his attention to me and looking forward to invade me into all of my continents. So if that happened, then my situation would be very bad for sure. A. The green player has just sent me thumbs up, but so far I'm not sure whether he is going to waste his troops on either yellow or blue, or will he be just simply turtling which would be extremely bad with the yellow player attacking me like crazy. But I'm not saying that it's something bad. As at first the yellow player could have attacked me to prevent me from becoming too strong of having many more troops than others, while now he could potentially is trying to force me to attack green, so I would ruin the diplomacy with him, but the balance of the game would be saved. But at the same time it's possible that the yellow player just wanted to simply suicide on me all of this time. That's impossible to know so unless the yellow player explains the thoughts behind his moves by himself. As looking from different sides his moves could be interpreted differently each time. We can just speculate, each person's interpretation could be very subjective based on or influenced by personal feelings, experience, or opinions. But now it's so good that he invaded green fortifying his army into the green player's continent. And it's even better that he left the game. As with that, with the blue and yellow players being bots, I only have to deal with green. We have the same number of troops, and if I invade him now, then I win, or if I let him hold these continents and if he's smart, then he wins. So as much as I appreciated alliance with the green player, I had to betray him, as otherwise I would have lost if he had attacked me with me letting him hold those continents. But now since he raged quit also, all I have to do now is to deal with three bots, which is going to be easy. The yellow bot has been eliminated. The blue bot has been eliminated, and finally the green bot has been eliminated. Here we have another victory. Now if you're wondering how classic map would look like if it was simplified, then check this video out. It is another 6 player game of one of the smallest risk maps.